Nebraska Preps post game with Damon Benning and Jacob Padilla. There's that voice. I just like to hear him say Padilla. So, I mean, outside of that, it's not that much fun anymore. <laughs> I'm glad you have a good sense of humor. Been doing this for about a year now, so it's, <laughs> right. we made it a full year, DB. <laughs> oh, that's that stealthy sarcasm of one of my favorites. JP, man, how you been, man? You ready for this? Yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy. Uh, feels like basketball just got over with, and now we're already starting uh, fall sports, but I'm excited for it. Yeah, I felt I thought I was bad with Big Ten Network, Big Red Wrap-Up, KTV, coaching. You have multiple sports at one university and high school sports, so... Best wishes to yeah. you, my guy. Best wishes. Yeah, Saturday should be fun uh, with the, the uh, volleyball starting at 4 and the uh, football game starting at 3. So, um, I, and I, and I that's just, after your Thursday night excursion, or, right? Yeah. yeah. And Friday volleyball. So two, two on Friday. So, yeah, it'll be fun to uh, try to hus- – hopefully uh, – Hopefully the Nebraska-Illinois game does not go down to the very end because I'm going to have to be listening on the radio then. Yeah, if Nebraska and Illinois goes down to the wire, there will be some there will be some folks that will induce panic. Uh, <laughs> very much the, so. In the, in the state of Nebraska. Now, having said that, talk about panic. How about trying to get your mind around Thursday night football this week, which for all intents and purposes has got some marquee names. Yeah. Not so sure if we'll get marquee matchups. Yeah, that yeah. They're I mean, starting off with uh, like you said, some big names here with uh, Burke Belvey West as a game that I'll be at, and it's obviously- as well most of the Metro, <laughs> yeah. I believe, on a uh, Thursday night. Yep, uh, Belvey West obviously preseason number one, bringing back so much uh, offensively, um, and then Burke coming coming back from the uh, missing all of last year. Uh, with OPS and obviously Devin Jackson, we've talked about. Um, be interesting to see kind of it, it, if they can overcome that that year off that we talked about last week, just um, a year off of not playing and kind of the, the lost development from that aspect. But um, Burke's obviously a good program. They got a really good coach over there, so I expect them to come out and uh, be ready to go. We'll see if they've uh, they've got enough talent, they've got enough depth to to kind of uh, keep up in game one, but. Um, yeah, should be should be should be educational at least, so we can learn a lot about both these teams. Yeah, this isn't a statistic that I think always has value, but I think when you play Bellevue West, it matters more than most. Time of possession, number one, the ability to control the clock, I think is huge. The other thing is you've got to get Bellevue West off the field on third down. If you allow them to convert more than one or two third downs on a drive, it inevitably is going to yield points. I, I think that is a foregone conclusion. They've kind of it's kind of been a Jedi mind trick with them, right? You think big play, big play, big play, but over the last two years, quietly they've run the football better than almost anyone in the Metro. Yeah, and that's kind of the thing about Bevy West. Obviously, you hear about all the wide receivers and the way they throw it around, but. They, they've had some great running backs that pair with that that, that uh, passing attack. And L.J. Rich, Richardson uh, is one of the best in the state. And um, he, he's the kind of guy that can beat you. Uh, you lose him out of the backfield, can catch a, a little bit and take it that way. But he will pound you up the middle if, if you're not ready to stop that. You suck in the defense, and then that's when they hit you over the top. So um, they, they've got so many options. Their offense is so spread out um, with, with the young guys, with the transfer, with the guys coming back and those tight ends. Um, they're going to be fun to watch again. And like you said, you, you cannot give them extra opportunities. If you get them in third and long, you have to get off the field. Could I, could I interest you in telling, getting you to believe that the most consistent thing about Bellevue West, outside of Coach Huffman's energy and um, – <laughs> The bucket hat. The bucket hat. That the most consistent thing about this football team is L.J. Richardson. Yeah, I, I as think that's star-studded fair. star-studded as they are with the Halls and the Helms and the Riley Duckers, that L.J. Richardson, a.k.a. Les, is is kind of the, 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 the focal point of that offense. Yeah, he's one of the most productive players in the state last year. Um, and again, the, the wideouts, obviously – uh, Keegan Johnson last year is um, kind of the guy that 
You lo- you're losing a right. lot of dependability and reliability in, in Keegan Johnson. Yeah, and again, right? We saw what happened against Carney. They put the ball in Keegan Johnson's hands a year ago. Yeah, and so that's gone. So it's going to have to be those guys um, last year. And <laughs> Here we go. Odell Richardson in seven games, 142 carries for 1,239 yards, 8.7 a pop, yeah. 15 touchdowns, and 600-yard games. Not bad. Yeah, he's, he's steady Eddie. <laughs> Takes care of the football. Now, his health will be key. He's been a little dinged up uh, in the preseason. So, and that's everybody, right? But some more than others. I, I think for the aforementioned the three Metro teams, it always seemed to be the usual suspects. Burke, we just talked about, Omaha North uh, and, and Omaha Central. Not real deep, but, but they belong in the discussion in terms of, I think, top, top end talent per se I think just not can't afford an injury you know in Omaha North is going to have to keep Keyshawn Williams healthy uh, in Omaha Central is going to have to keep uh, you know not Wood so much as as, as Jalen Lloyd yeah gonna have to keep him healthy so I, I just think that's that's where I think the year off will matter like what's the wear and tear what's the rigor what's the football body kind of adjust to for some of those teams and then where are the young guys? Where are the guys kind of in the development part of their programs? Are those guys ready to step up without getting a chance to play last year? Yeah. Uh, again, we've even talked about what is Devin Jackson going to look like. like and obviously, we know he's talented. What will that translate to in terms of production on the field and the way they, they use him? Because we haven't seen it yet because he didn't get a chance to play last year either. So that's I think there are a lot of guys that are probably like junior seniors um, on that team that uh, are going to be counted on that haven't done it at the varsity level yet. Yeah, it's going to be interesting because that may not be – it's obviously with Bell West, right? You always are going to garner some attention, but they got – it's a crowded night for star-studded because then you go just across town and you got Millard North and Millard South. Yeah, right off the bat. <laughs> Again, no love lost there and some talented young guys, a couple talented older guys – Primarily at Millard South with Gassaway and Stanger. But Rucker's got another year under his belt. Uh, you got Isaiah McMorris over at Millard North, who is going to be just a sophomore. There's a lot at stake, I think, for uh, for old Pacific over to Q Street. Yeah, and especially with Millard North kind of trying to get back into that mix because Millard South is obviously um, kind of, kind been of established. The, yeah, kind of been at the, at the top of Millard in the last couple of years. Millard West has kind of had some good pushes, but um, Millard North's been uh, down a little bit compared to the other Millard schools. And I think they're, they, they have been getting some good young players in, into the, uh, the program. Like you mentioned, Isaiah McMorris is one, but um, so this is kind of a big deal for them to show like, Hey, we belong here. We belong on the field with you. Um, we're going to give you everything you can handle. Yeah, the interesting thing about that one is, how about if I give you another one and we jump classes? We talk Bennington and Grand Island Northwest. Right? Not, not too bad of a matchup in Class B who has lost that class perhaps more than any other, lost a lot of high-quality senior-laden talent. Yeah, I, w- I was going through some of the rosters and just kind of studying. It's like, all right, who's coming back? It's like, well... That what senior is gone. Senior, senior, yeah. senior, senior. <laughs> senior. Yeah. Like, and, and it's all the top programs last year. That's I think that's why Class B was so good last year, and there were so many teams in that same kind of seven, eight, nine uh, team mix there that were competing. It's all every sorts week. of jumbled up, right? Yeah, it was all guys we're going like, up huh, against each other, beating each is, other. Yeah, just, are, are they good or are they not good? Oh, they got some good. W- I mean, I remember like week six, seven discussions, and we're trying. To see what happens when the dust settles, that was that was an unbelievable year. Yeah, and w- one one uh, thing that Grand Iowa Northwest has in its favor is uh, it does have a quarterback coming back, yeah. um, Sam Hartman, and uh, that's I think that's one of the thing you kind of look at the the top ten teams in B and about four four of those or so four or five of those have returning quarterbacks, and I think that's a big part of why they're in that mix. Yeah, so so the interesting thing about Bennington, though, is uh, – and now the quarterback's name is escaping me. From last year? Yeah. Uh, Bird. He had beat out Bird before yeah. he got hurt. Okay, yeah. So okay. so uh, – and, and I'm, nah, I'm drawing a blank. This is the thing about a live <laughs> podcast. Sometimes you get that. Uh, 
I think Bennington is going to be right there. I almost put them at one. I think I settled in at two or three. I did go with Aurora one. But you, you brought up some good questions about Aurora. You're like, well, they lost a lot of production. But I'm just thinking to myself with Aurora, they bring they have so many young guys that played. And they had so much depth. I, I, I felt pretty comfortable putting them at one. But this Grand Island Northwest Bennington game, I think is going to be nothing short of fantastic because Bennington has had back-to-back really good freshman classes. They have just enough veterans. I think it's, I think it's really going to serve them well uh, come this week. Oh, um, Seth Weapon? Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, we thank talked you. about the hoops, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Old draw, old. There you, see, go. you know what I'm drawing over yeah. here? It's called a blank. Yes. Yeah. See, that, that's always rough. Anytime you have injuries before we even get to the season. Yeah. And, and they got they were besieged early. Yeah. In Bennington, and it was a, we were surprised all year that they just kept next man up, next yeah. man up, next man yeah. up. It's a, it's a that's a well coached bunch. Yeah, for sure. And kind of showed the depth and the guys that they had ready to kind of step up there um, when the guys ahead of them went down, and that's. Um, that's the mark of a good team and one that is able to make it through the entire season. We've seen some other teams have their season derailed by injuries, which is hard to see, but um, really does kind of show um, how important depth can be um, depending on <laughs> your luck that season. So I kind of I settled in on a little bit of a top 10 for A. We talked about it last week. I kind of I played with it in my head. I tried to factor in a few injuries. So I, I went with this. I went with Bell West 1. Bellevue West, for those of you asking at home. Elkhorn South, Millard South, Lincoln Southeast, Prep, West Side, Lincoln East, Gretna, North Burke. I wasn't overly, eh, no Papio, no yeah. Papio South. Papio South, I worry about their offensive and defensive lines. I think they're vastly undersized. They have really good skill. Papillion, couple key injuries that I think yeah. have changed the trajectory of that season. Am I, am I missing something perhaps? I don't think so. Again, anytime you get towards the back end of a top 10, there could be any of five, six different teams that could be in that mix. Um, it's just kind of a matter of preference and kind of what you're seeing individually. But um, I'm curious, what, what did you see um, to push Elkhorn South ahead of Millard South? So here's the thing. I think when I look at the defense that they bring back, led by Maverick Noonan, I really like Coy Wilkie. I like the combination at running back with Ben Warren and Cole Ballard. I think Warren can do some other things. If they get good quarterback play, I like Chase Emsick. They have a lot of pieces, and there's something to a team. And I listen, I know what they lost. I mean, you just, you just don't replace – Krause and Prohaska and, and, and some of these thoroughbreds that they lost from a year ago. But I just think they're kind of hungry. And it's I'm more comfortable with them defensively and offensively taking care of the ball than I am Millard South, even though the names are there. And I've seen some flashes of Stanger at quarterback. And I just want to see how... I want to see what happens up front on that offensive line. That that is true. Like, obviously, we Miller South has a lot coming back in the skill positions yeah. with um, with Stenger, but Brock Murtaugh, um, Antrell Taylor, Christian Nash, um, got a and lot not, of guys. Not, that, a, not a bad bunch. Yeah, right? got, got a lot of guys <laughs> that played a big part in their season last year, um, but they, they lost a lot uh, in the trenches. Um, and, and I mean, I mean, let's not kid ourselves. I mean, TJ Airbon was you know, he's seventy some percent of that offense. <laughs> yeah. They, yeah, they ran. I, they ran I just don't think you – you just don't easily yeah. recover from such a focal point because even in crunch time, that was the guy. So I I'd, I'd just want to see them kind of evolve into that. Yeah. You know, but on paper, they may have better individual talent, but for me, that was the difference between Elkhorn South. And, you know, because Krause wasn't always healthy last year, so yeah. I think that helped – Elkhorn South at the quarterback spot kind of really transitioned into this year. Yeah. Um, but for me, that was kind of the difference. The real struggle for me was putting prep ahead of Westside. <laughs> and I'm not doing that to sandbag. I just think when I look at how prep is built with uh, Marcelino and Sledge and 
the, these hammers that they have up front yeah. to go with guys like Cade and Russell and, and A.J. Jones and some of these guys, Jonah Moore on the back end. I mean, those guys can run defensively. I I like the three-headed monster at running back. I, yeah, and you, you guys have a lot of talent coming back at West, a lot of young talent, but you guys replace some really talented linemen. Yeah, we do. That's, and and, see, and, I've, and I've maintained this. Yeah. Good talent can make you lazy. Yeah. Right? You you kind of wait around on guys. Oh, they'll make a play. Kobe Bretts, he'll make a play. Cole Payton, he'll make a play. Vontae Dickerson, he'll make a play. Kate Haberman, he'll make a play. Will Hurtado, he'll make a play. Right? Uh, Radisha, he'll make a play. So, we had to really get back to the basics, the concepts, the pens, the pulls, the zones, the... How we really want, I mean, had to really break it down because we have so many young players. I, th- I thought it was, I thought objectively speaking, I would, I would have put, I put prep ahead of us. Well, the good news is you'll get it. Yeah, we'll figure, figure it out, out if, here if, if you're right or not. We'll here figure in a it out days. about 72 hours, um, right? So it, that's but, Friday night, uh, uh, right, open the season again. Um, last, last year didn't, uh, didn't quite go preps away. So I'm sure they'll be, uh, coming here ready to, ready to go right off the bat. Yeah. I've been a part of some interesting rivalries, right? As, yeah. as a coach and as a player in the Metro. This one with yeah. prep and West Side. Is about as real as it oh, yeah. gets. It's 100%. not even. There's nothing nice about it. There's <laughs> no. not. It's not friendly. I mean, even the adults that have gone on to be very successful. It, it's. Just, there's just nothing friendly about it. It's very interesting for me to be a part of this. Yeah, fortunately, Damon and I can uh, kind of hide that here right. within the studio and get through this podcast. <laughs> but uh, away I'm from the mic, so it, it, it's pretty heated in here. <laughs> <laughs> it's. It's. I mean, it doesn't. It must not surprise you because you have roots in it. Yeah, no, I, I, I went to school with prep. I, I saw it firsthand. So, um, and seeing it over the years, multi sports, um, it's, it's always a fun one for sure. Yeah. So, I mean, that one will be really interesting. I think the thing that I was the least comfortable about. It's almost like the more I talk about them, the more pushback. I get from a couple of other schools in Lincoln. I think there's really one that can stake the claim for. His, as high as I am on Lincoln Southeast, I get a lot of hey, not so fast from folks that like Lincoln East. Is it simply about getting consistent quarterback play, or are we missing something, in your opinion, with what Lincoln East brings to the table? Well, I, I think that is, uh, for those that favor that way, I mean, it's rarely a bad choice to kind of side with the, the experienced quarterback. And we're still not sure what that's going to look like for Southeast. I think their their supporting cast is probably better. They've got more individual difference makers, uh, guys that we know that are being recruited at the highest level. But, um, yeah, a quarterback can make a big difference, uh, and they've got one of the best. And they've got – they've got obviously, they lost Carter Glenn, who was a huge part yeah, of what they did last he's, year. He's fan, just like, a fantastic high school player. Yeah, just – ridiculous what he did last season in football basketball playing through the torn Con- shoulder consummate and, competitor well it's, it's being, I, I ran into him uh at uh thomas Vick, or isaiah Roby's uh camp he was out there helping he uh said he went out and played in the uh the all-star game before he got totally clear <laughs> it's just uh, Excuse me. dude just loves to compete yeah it doesn't uh, surprise me one bit but um they had some good uh some other good uh wide receivers for him to throw to so it's they're going to they're going to air that thing out if uh if Walters can take a a bit of a step up in a little bit more consistency a little bit more efficient to go with the kind of the big totals and um i think East will have a chance to definitely be in that mix for sure so when you're kind of what is it that kind of excites you is it the uh competitiveness in the middle at B, kind of sifting through it? Is it, can Bevy West handle all the pressure, having the target, the defending state champs, and Westside probably being better late than early? What are some of the storylines for you? I think uh, the return of OPS is the biggest one. And we, we've talked about it kind of, all right, we don't know what these teams are going to look like, but the combination of some of the, these are some of the better programs in the Metro that just were not part of things last year with Burke and North uh, in particular. Um, so having those back, having the individual star um, talent of guys like Deshaun Woods and, uh, and Devin Jackson um, and, and Keyshawn Williams and guys yeah. like that back in the mix, 
Um, it, it's never a good thing when you've got some of the best players in the state sitting at home watching. So I think that's the biggest story, and that's kind of uh, that's part of what part of why I want to be at that uh, that Burke Bell West game on Thursday. Just like welcome back OPS, Excuse man. Me. Um, that. I think that'll that'll help with the schedules uh, and, and all that. <laughs> Last year was kind of tough trying to piecemeal uh, things together and get everybody games. Hopefully, more teams will be able to uh, allow teams to get a mostly <laughs> full schedule this season. So, um, I think that's kind of the number one thing that I'm looking at heading into the season. For of the teams that we kind of referenced and gone back and forth with in the top ten, for you, which team that will depth probably matter the most? Either they don't have it. And it will matter, or because they do, they possess a little bit of an advantage. Hmm, that's a good question. Uh, I think Bellevue West depth um, probably will allow them um, to kind of um, persevere through the season, if anything, because obviously you don't want to have any, any injuries, but they've got so many weapons. Uh, at wide receiver, at tight end. Uh, they, they've got a lot of good defenders coming back as well. Um, so I, I think they've got plenty of depth that will allow them to kind of – they're coming in as number one. I think they'll um, they'll have the talent and the depth to um, retain that throughout the season. Um, I think w- we talked about with the OPS teams, and I think maybe a Burke or a North um, looking those, to It was going to be mix. one of those two teams. Yeah. I, would ag- I would agree with you on both those choices that if they stay healthy – have a chance actually become very very interesting yeah. and we'll see what happens we didn't even mention omaha north and lincoln southeast yeah i mean how about that one for an opener two teams trying to find consistency at the quarterback spot built up the middle on both sides of the ball with their offensive and defensive lines and a couple of dynamic skill guys with an applegate a Keyshawn yeah. williams that one's that one's kind of flying under the yeah. radar and a host of really intriguing week one yeah. matchups. And I think that the Bellevue West, uh, um, Burke kind of stole a little bit of the luster as kind of the first one of welcome back OPS. But yeah, that is absolutely, I mean, that one might be um, more as competitive as any game on, on Friday night. If yeah, North is tell, ready to go. tell us a ton. Yeah. You think you can learn more from a, from an Omaha North versus Lincoln Southeast or an Omaha Burke versus Bellevue West? I think probably um, the Southeast North. Um, I, I think we know uh, Bellevue West for the most part. Um, we know what they're going to be able to be. Um, and wouldn't be surprised if they they jumped all over. Bro. Exactly. And I think if, if it goes the other way and if uh, it's, a, it's a close game down stretch, that'll tell us a lot. Um, but I think we'll be able to learn a lot either way, no matter how that Southeast North game goes. Mm. Um, if, if North is able to come in and win that game, um, or take it down to the wire. It's like, all right, welcome back, uh, Larry Martin and crew. You guys are ready to make some noise. Um, if Southeast comes out and they get good quarterback play and they can control that game, it's like, all right, now that you guys are definitely top three, top four type of team. It's really interesting as I kind of harken back in my heart and in my head, you know, Southeast bounced Stomaha North out of the playoffs yeah. two years ago. And that was the second time that they had beat us in the season. Yeah, And the first time that we walked off the field at Seacrest, <laughs> Isaac Gifford and company waved. Oh, yeah. I remember that. And told us to enjoy our bus trip back <laughs> to Omaha and to keep the Metro BS <laughs> in the Metro. I'd, I'll be curious to see if the folks from North remember that feeling, getting it kind of handed to you not once but twice, and Southeast embracing doing so. I'm sure Keyshawn will. No question <laughs> that you don't. Sianche Brown will be yeah. another guy playing along that D line. And the other thing is, if you're a fan of Omaha North or a team in the Metro, how about? Now I know. Listen, I know. Don't cry for us, Argentina. <laughs> we open with Prep and Omaha North, right? Only one of those teams is in the top ten currently. How about Omaha North opening with Lincoln Southeast and getting Omaha West Side in week two? Yep. The, the, the scheduling gods. Welcome they, back. <laughs> they play funny games after taking a year off, but in a two and in a two and two schedule where you know you just flip home and away for back to back years. Unfortunately, that's just kind of how it goes. Well, they'll be able to learn quite a bit about where they are right now and where they need to reach uh, to accomplish their goals right yeah, off the bat. Folks, will, folks will grow up here in a hurry. Uh, should be a fantastic week. We'll be back next week. It'll be a little preview. It'll be a lot of recap. But it'll be a ton of fun. 
Uh, that's my main man, Jacob Padilla. With two L's and an A. Nebraska <laughs> Preps post game with Damon Benning and Jacob Padilla. <laughs> <laughs>